Sunday service was going to be slightly different, uh, but we hope you enjoy this act of remembrance as we share it with you this morning. We unite across faiths, cultures and backgrounds to remember the service and sacrifice of the armed forces community from Britain and the Commonwealth in particular today. In 2020, we pay tribute to the men and women of the Second World War generation and those of today's who have served and sacrificed to defend our nation. We remember the collaboration of the Commonwealth and the Allied Nations who stood shoulder to shoulder then to secure our freedom and the communities coming together today to protect us all. As ever, we remember those who were killed in action, or by disease, those who were bereaved, the lost, the families which were shattered, the wounded, the maimed, the injured, those who held in silence unspoken memories of warfare. And as we remember those who fought then and now, we also remember those who remain anxiously at home in these communities and those who remained at home in this community in particular and any who are in that position today. So let us pray that God will heal all memories, speak a word of peace and bring us his healing. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God of all healing and forgiveness draw us to himself and cleanse us from our sins, that we may behold the glory of his Son, the Word made flesh. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So now as we begin the act of remembrance, uh, let us remember that we're in God's presence before we hear the role of honour called. We meet in the presence of God. We commit ourselves to the work of penitence and faith. 
for reconciliation between the nations, that all people may together live in freedom, justice and peace. We pray for all who in bereavement, disability and pain continue to suffer the consequences of fighting and terror. We remember with thanksgiving and sorrow those whose lives in world wars and in conflicts past and present have been given and taken away. We remember with proud thanksgiving those who gave their lives in the 1914-1918 war from Forest Row. George Baker, William Bannister, Henry Biddlecombe, Albert Brand, Charles Brooker, Wilfred Brownlow, Edward Cannon, Sidney Cook, Raymond Cox, Thomas Draper, Herbert Dunstan, Frederick Edwards, Victor Farley, Edmund Fisher, George Fisher, Archibald Gladman, Ronald Gordon, Harold Greyer, George Gregory, Alfred Grisbrook, Frederick Holmwood, Gerald Horlick, George Kekiewicz, Henry Kekiewicz, John Kekiewicz, Henry Kensett, Michael Lawrence, Oliver Lawrence, Keith Lucas, Bernard Luxford, Edward Luxford, William Luxford, Walter Martin, William Martin, Walter Miles, Albert Mills, Albert Mitchell, Spencer Padgham, William Padgham, Harry Page, Reginald Panett, Edward Parker, William Parker, Alfred Richardson, Cyril Robinson, Robert Robson, Alfred Sands, William Sands, James Simmons, George Simpson, Jack Sippitz, Sidney Snellgrove, Frederick Southey, William Stiles, William Sykes, Charles Sims, Philip Tomsett, Albert Tomsett, Albert Upton, Arthur Upton, Algernon Villiers, Eric Waters, Frederick Weber, Albert White, Nigel Whitfield. From Hammerwood and Holtai, Stanhope Barclay, E. Stanley Bokes, Leonard G. Hemsley, Herbert W. Langridge, Frank Burrell, Sidney Peters, George Harris Whitbourne, Frederick Noakes, Frederick Charles Francis Goodhart. Those remembered from Ashes Wood, M. N. Abraham, W. Armstrong, H. Brown, J. Brown, Alfred Baldwin, Arthur Baldwin, C. Bennett, A. F. Crouch, R. Cox. C. Cork, E. P. Card, A. Crowhurst, A. Dan, A. T. Fielder, C. Gates, A. Gates, A. Garwood, H. Heesman, C. Heesman, W. Hartfield, G. Hensley, G. Jupp, J. Jupp, F. Murrell, A. Post, R. Russell, A. Thorpe, F. G. Truscott, M. J. Venn, H. Williams, J. Wheeler. We remember with proud thanksgiving 
those who gave their lives in the 1939-1945 war. Robert Abbott, Anthony Alexander, Ernest Alcorn, Eric Apted, Eric Apthorpe, Joan Barber, John Barlow, James Blackstone, Daniel Brown, William Brown, Ray Buckler, Ted Cheesewright, Jack Clark, Reginald Coppard, Peter Craig, Sidney Custom, Albert Dallymore, John Dyer, Richard Eaton, Roy Edwards, Michael Faber, Philip Finglay, John Fletcher, Leonard Gladman, Malcolm Hamilton, Claude Hamley, James Heesman, Gilbert Heathcote, Harry Heckler, John Hett, Victor Hills, Norman Howie, Dudley Humphreys, David Hunset, Edward Hyder, Cecil Ingram, James Jack, Donald Jenner, Peter Kingston, Alfred Laird, Jack Leach, George Longley, John Looker, Anthony Loveridge, Michael Loveridge, Harry Lucas, William McClay, John McWay, Sidney Martin, John Martin, Charles Merriwick, Donald Miles, Charles Mills, Dennis Neal, Roger Newman, Alan Orchard, Frederick Page, Roland Jack Page, Anthony Partridge, Albert Post, Ronald Potton, Frank Rosa, Kenneth Runciner, Henry Russell, Donald Saunders, Basil Sayers, Derek Toll, Kenneth Thompson, Alfred Williams, Ernest Williams, Wilfred Woodrow. From Hammerwood and Holtai, William Q. Bidell, John Gordon Bidell, George Thomas Bond, John Patrick Bose Lyon, Anthony Colston Partridge, George Albert Penfold, H. Barry Stanhope Lister, and Clifford Remenay. Those remembered from Ashesswood. R. Abbott, A. Alexander, E. Alcorn, D. Apthorpe, W. Brown, T. Cheesewright, P. Craig, R. Eaton, J. Fletcher, C. Hamlin, C. Haywood, J. Pett, V. Hills, D. Jenner, A. Laird, G. Longley, H. Lucas, A. Page, A. Partridge, A. Post, R. Potton, D. Tom. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
those who you have gathered from the storm of war into the peace of your presence. May that same peace calm our fears, bring justice to all peoples, and establish harmony among the nations. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Remain seated for our readings. A reading from Matthew chapter 25. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like this. Ten bridesmaids took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. When the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them, but the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, all of them became drowsy and slept. But at midnight there was a shout, Look, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those bridesmaids got up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish said to the wise, Give us some more of your oil, for our lamps are going out. But the wise replied, No, there will not be enough for you and for us. You had better go to the dealers and buy some for yourselves. And while they went to buy it, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went with him into the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the other bridesmaids came also, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he replied, Truly I tell you, I do not know you. Keep awake, therefore, for you know that neither the day nor the hour. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. May I speak in the name of the living God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Be prepared. Uh, that's what our reading uh, is all about today, being prepared. Um, you know, and that's the motto for the Scout movement, for all the scouting. And uh, Robert Baden-Powell, some years ago, was asked, uh, be prepared for what? And his response was, why? Any old thing. Baden-Powell, when, he, uh, when the, the scouting movement was started, founded in the 1907, had this idea that he wanted people, uh, young people in particular, to be prepared, to be equipped for life, in mind and body, to do their duty. And um, I'm not sure how many people know that, that actually during the Great War the Scouts did indeed play their part, and Winston Churchill himself commended them by saying, in the air raids, we saw the spectacle of children, 12 to 14, performing their perfect, in perfect coolness. I think that's quite nice for Churchill to say that about young, the young boys of the time. In perfect coolness and composure, the useful function assigned to them in the streets and in public offices. In particular, the boys were actually stationed on the coastline as watchers and they were particularly good at it. On this day we do remember all those that gave their life in the war um, and we remember uh, others on this day as well, not just those who've died in two great wars but those who have continued over the years to give, to pay that extremely high price. We remember all the soldiers, both men and women, and sometimes we focus perhaps in our minds on adults and we forget the many children that also sacrifice so much in a war. Both those who are, uh, do it voluntarily, like the Scouts and the Great War, um, but that also those who are conscripted, child soldiers of this, this day and age, of our own generation, that are forced to commit dreadful acts of violence and atrocity not just, uh, that's not just the work, that's the worst thing, but they have their childhood stolen from them because of it. Baden Powell wanted the Scouts to pre be prepared, to prepare themselves to be productive citizens, 
to be strong leaders and to bring joy to others. He wanted each of the scouts to be ready in mind and body to meet with a strong heart whatever challenges waited them ahead. And so uh, it's no surprise that today uh, our Bear Grylls is the chief scout uh, for, for the scouting movement, someone who's known for his adventures and maybe sometimes being a little bit too adventurous. But, you know, it's that spirit of let's give it a go and, let, and that can-do spirit. And, of course, as Christians, we also need to be prepared for life. Jesus' commandment to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and to love others as you are loved. This is our Christian code. And it also acknowledges the fact that we are weak on our own, and it is God that uh, guards us and surrounds us with his protection, who loves us unconditionally and unfailingly. And our Bible reading today, uh, as I've said, we hear about those who are waiting for the bridegroom to appear. And they don't know when the bridegroom is going to arrive. They have to keep their lamps ready, lit, so that it doesn't matter what time of the day or night the bridegroom arrives, they are ready. They need to be prepared. And we also hear in our reading of those who weren't quite so prepared who, when the bridegroom arrived, had run out of oil or were just about to run out of oil, even though those who were prepared had warned them and said, look, you know, you're going to run out, so you ought to get yourself off to somewhere to buy some more oil quickly. This teaches us that it's not enough just to bustle about life doing our own thing, because when stuff happens, as it does, any old thing, as Baby Powell would say, it's wrong to expect others to sort it out for us. We all have our part to play, and to do that, we all need to be prepared. We all need to take responsibility. You could say that this pandemic that we've been experiencing this year has caught us out, even though there have been some scientists, some people, who have warned that this something like this might happen at some point. We have been caught out because we may, I think, have been too selfish, running around, doing our own thing, looking after number one, and not thinking about the consequences, just like those who ran out of oil, who had been warned that actually you need to be prepared, you need to go and get some, or you will run out. Just like them, we chose to disregard the warning and continue on our own way. Until all of a sudden, that moment comes and we are not prepared. This applies to all things, really. We head off uh, in, in one direction, doing our own thing, disregarding what's going on around us. Another common element that we've been listening to this year is about the environment and the effect that our greed and our need for, want, need for things now and things uh, that we don't necessarily need all the time uh, has come to the fore. And the effects and the consequences of that is that across the globe we are running out of our resources. We need to heed the advice from those that are warning us that we need to prepare for the future. As we remember the sacrifice made by so many today, perhaps we too ought to think about very carefully about the sacrifices that we too ought to be making for others tomorrow. At the end of every two minute silence, as we heard Liam read, when you go home, Tell them of us and say, for your tomorrow we gave our today. What will our tomorrow look like? What will our tomorrow look like for our children and our children's children if we continue to plough our own furrow and follow our selfish ways? We need to heed 
Baden Powell and be prepared. Maybe what we ought to do is listen to a few more scouts. So we come to a time of prayer as we pray for all who suffer as a result of conflict and ask that God may give us peace. And when I say may God give peace, please would you respond, God give peace. Let's pray. Let's pray for the service men and women who have died in the violence of war, each one remembered by and known by God. May God give peace. God give peace. We pray for those who love them in death as in life, offering the distress of their grief and the sadness of their loss. May God give peace. God give peace. We pray for all members of the armed forces who are in danger this day, remembering family and friends and all who pray for their safe return. May God give peace. God give peace. We pray for civilian women, children and men whose lives are disfigured by war or terror, calling to mind in penitence the anger and hatreds of humanity. May God give peace. God give peace. We pray for peacemakers and peacekeepers who seek to keep this world secure and free. May God give peace. God give peace. We pray for all who bear the burden and privilege of leadership, political, military and religious, asking for gifts of wisdom and resolve in the search for reconciliation and peace. May God give peace. God give peace. O God of truth and justice, we hold before you those whose memory we cherish and those whose names we will never know. Help us to lift our eyes above the torment of this broken world and grant us the grace to pray for those who wish us harm. As we honour the past, may we put our faith in your future, for you are the source of life and hope, now and forevermore. Amen. And as we ask for God's will to be done in this and every place, particularly thinking this year of the US elections for Brexit and for us living all as the, in the world, living through COVID. Let us pray together as our Saviour Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. So let us pledge ourselves today to live as good neighbours, to honour the past, to care for all who are in need, and to live at peace among ourselves and with all people. So we say together, Lord God, Father of all, we pledge ourselves to serve you and this neighbourhood, to bring relief to all who are in need to comfort the sad, lonely and distressed. Keep us ever mindful of the struggles and achievements of former generations and of this place where we make our home now and in the days to come. Amen. Strengthen our hearts and hands and minds, O Lord, to work together for peace, to see you in one another 
and to seek your kingdom above all things, that your will may be seen to be done, and your kingdom come, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the Lord of lords and King of kings. Amen. So before uh, we finish, you'll see that we're surrounded by the wreaths today. Uh, usually we uh, bless, ask God's blessing on the wreaths outside before we lay them at the War Memorial. But this year we're going to be blessing them now and then they will be collected and laid on the War Memorial. Blessed are you, Heavenly Father, in your love you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to die upon the cross for our redemption. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. In your goodness you clothed the fields of Flanders with poppies to become symbols and reminders of your redeeming love. By your blessing, grant that these poppies may be a reminder to us and to all that see them of all who have sacrificed their lives for us and for the freedom of the world. We ask this in Jesus Christ, our Saviour and Redeemer. Amen. So we ask God's blessing on each and every one of us. God grant to the living grace, to the departed rest, to the Queen, the Church, the Commonwealth and the world peace and concord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.